In a previous video, we tested a super cheap optical spectrometer that we bought on Taobao. It only cost $49 and we gave this product a pretty thorough test with a lot of different light sources. We promised that we would update everyone if or when this device becomes available to buy in countries outside of China. Well, we now have an update for you. In the first video, we had a lot of fun. We tested a lot of different light sources. Some were familiar to us, some were completely new. But in all the tests, we learned something new with the help of this little spectrometer. If you haven't already watched the first video, then you might find it helpful to watch first. There's a link in the description below. So let's just recap a few of the key details about this small, cheap spectrometer. Firstly, this device is not a product, but a project. A DIY project to be more accurate. Every single one is hand-built by this guy. Say hello to Mr. Kang and his DIY spectrometer. Since the last video, we've been trying hard to persuade him to make his device available for people from outside China. A lot of people who watched the first video were interested in buying this for themselves, and now he has done just that. But why buy a DIY device when you can just make one yourself? After all, there are quite literally hundreds of projects like this on YouTube. Actually, we made one a couple of years ago, but the results were not exactly fantastic, and certainly not up to the standard of Mr. Kang's device. You see, Although this homemade product uses a DVD as the diffraction grating, this creator has refined his manufacturing methods, and iterated the process, over a considerable amount of time. That's why we like this little spectrometer. Frankly, this DIY device gives commercial products that cost 10 or 20 times as much, a damn good run for their money. So let's just talk about the specifications of this device. The creator says that the spectrometer can resolve ultraviolet down to 340 nanometers. We found that the device can detect wavelengths a little further down into the UV spectrum. And at longer wavelengths, it is claimed that the spectrometer can work into the near infrared to 1050 nanometers. Again, our own experience with this device is that it can detect even further into the IR spectrum. And as for the spectral resolution, we found this to be around 1 nanometer. It is possible that this is even lower. Mr. Kang has collected spectra that can resolve the double peak of the main sodium lamp line. This would put its resolution closer to half a nanometer or less. This device uses the Theramino software, an open source spectrometer project. Again, the creator of this device has added new features to this. His upgrades include intensity correction, noise reduction, and features that allow data items like CRI to be calculated. Included with the product is a compact fluorescent lamp and lamp holder. This is used to calibrate the spectrometer. In future, the creator plans to add multi-point calibration to improve the spectral accuracy even further. Okay, in the last video, there were a couple of mistakes and now, I would just like to take this opportunity to correct those errors. In the last video, we saw the camera image in the display, and assumed that the creator was buying the monochrome version of the camera module. That was an error. After having talked to the creator at length, we learned something rather incredible. It seems that these days, monochrome camera modules are actually a lot more expensive than their color counterparts. I guess that is just the economics of supply and demand. So, 
The intrepid Mr. Kang, decided to buy a color camera module, and then remove the Bayer filter by hand. It is this Bayer filter, that prevents all of those other DIY spectrometer projects, from achieving such a wide spectral range, as this device. Removing the Bayer filter, is a notoriously difficult process. You see, the CMOS image sensor underneath, is incredibly easy to damage. Quite literally, there is just a few microns of silicon dioxide, between the Bayer filter, and the delicate semiconductor structures, of the sensor below it. I have included a link to a video by the creator, Les's Lab. In this video, you can see the extreme lengths that one can go to, in order to remove this filter. Mr. Kang has kept this secret process to himself, and frankly, good for him. He did tell us that in the beginning, he was only getting a yield of about 50% from this process, but that now it is more like 80%. Just imagine, he is having to throw 20% of the camera modules he buys, into the trash. I can tell you now, we were very impressed, with just how much effort the creator put into the hand making of this spectrometer. He does this, so that other enthusiasts, just like us, may also own one of these instruments. Frankly, I can't see how he makes any money on this project. Another area where some mistakes were made, is that we didn't allow for the higher order diffraction effects. Often, we saw infrared or ultraviolet peaks that quite literally, do not exist. These diffraction effects, are a type of aliasing, that occurs due to the way that a diffraction grating, is essentially a discrete sampling system. On this green laser, you can see two infrared peaks, one at 808, and the other at 1064 nanometers. Well, there certainly is some energy at both these wavelengths within the laser itself, but the question is this, are these IR lines really being emitted, by this cheap 532 nanometer laser pointer? This is a long pass filter and it will remove most of the visible optical energy, leaving only the infrared. As you can see, it is only the 808 nanometer line, that seems to be emitted by this laser pointer. Now, if we change for a short pass filter, i.e., one that only allows the visible wavelengths to pass, we see a completely different picture. Now, we can see that the 1064 nanometer line, is clearly a result of higher order diffraction effects. Now, we can just repeat our filter experiment, with some of the other spectra, that are also potentially showing this effect. This 410 nanometer laser, is a classic example, but there are many more. We don't need to show all of the examples of where this occurred, but with this little keyring flashlight, this effect is very obvious, once we test the spectra, using these filters. Anyway, it's time to talk about where this device can be purchased, and how much it costs. What I find interesting, is that once you have a spectrometer, you seem to constantly find use cases for it that you would have never thought of before. It's sort of like how having a 3D printer can change your mental process for building things. So, we were considering making a ramen spectrometer, so we bought a band cut filter. No, not that kind of ramen. The filter we got claimed to have a discrimination level of OD4, or 10,000 to 1. But after testing with this device, it was clear that it didn't even meet OD1.5. We returned the filter and got another one. Let's be honest, my human assistants are pretty clumsy, and have a history of messing up most of the experiments that they attempt. So don't get your hopes up, for a video on Raman spectroscopy, anytime soon. So, the creator has made this product available on AliExpress. The price is a little higher than on Taobao, but that is mostly due to the higher percentage that this retailer charges the vendors. If you want to buy this device, there are a couple of things to be aware of. Firstly, this creator is hand making each one, and judging by the availability on AliExpress, 
probably in batches of 10. If there are none available when you visit the store, just bookmark the page and go back and check every few days. The second thing is that this is a DIY project and so does not come with any certifications. Usually, manufacturers put these little labels onto products to show that they have been tested and meet international regulations. That said, some unscrupulous brands, like this Nucalert device, just print these logos onto their products without obtaining any certifications or possibly doing any testing at all. We will be making a video all about what we have discovered about this snake oil product quite soon. So keep an eye open for that. Anyway, that's all we have for you today. We hope you enjoyed our little video, or at least found some parts of it interesting. If you want to see more of this kind of video, you could always press the subscribe button. This is not a monetized channel, and we don't have any sponsors. So we can say what we want, and YouTube's algorithm can go and get f***ed. Thank you for your time.